it has been a couple of weeks, maybe maybe two weeks, and my parts from Mauser has have arrived. I've got a lot of capacitors here. Most of these are for the power supply, which I haven't even really gotten into yet. I went through the power supply and identified all of the capacitors in it and ordered every capacitor that's in the power supply. I also ordered the ones that are on the motherboard. So they're all intermixed with each other right now. But the motherboard is generally only these radial capacitors and all these little surface mount ones. So this is, has C14 and C15 on these two. Okay, this one says customer part number, C2345. So this is definitely motherboard capacitors. And this one does not have a custom, customer part number. No, no part number on this one, but I think this, this is the one from 16 volt, 470 UF, 16 volt, 470 UF. So yeah, these, these two, we're going to replace these two. And I got another one back here, that's why there's three. <clears throat> it's a shame my C14, uh, C15, and C8 are not written on this package. Let's see what else I've got. More power supply capacitors. Sure, these are all power supply capacitors. I don't think I've got any other electrolytics on this motherboard. Yeah. All right. So that makes all of these power supply capacitors. Hopefully, I got the right sizes. I kind of did my best for guessing what size was what. There was a list on the 68K forums of capacitors. Um, oh, that's way too small of a resistor. Huh. Okay. Well, there's some bad resistors in the power supply as well, but I don't think that's big enough. Um, ah, this is probably C17. Let's see, 220 UF, 16 volt. 220 UF, 16 volt. Yeah, so this is, this is that capacitor there. And... Ah, here we go. C11 and 12. C11 and C12. These are the much smaller electrolytics, but I wonder if these are the right size or not. Yeah, probably. I've seen on, on another YouTube video somebody replaced a lot of these electrolytics with tantalums. I don't trust tantalums at all. I would rather not have any tantalums on my device. And they went with um, electrolytics for a reason. I'm not just going to yank them off there. Um, and arbitrarily replace them without doing all kinds of, you know, ESR comparisons and such. So I ordered nothing but a uh, Nichicon, so these should be all very reliable. I'm not seeing brand. Oh, these are these are pa Panasonic's. I may have ordered Panasonic's in some instances. So Panasonic's are generally pretty good as well. So. And then the two large um, storage capacitors on the uh, bulk storage capacitors, they usually call them, for the power supply. These probably aren't bad. I hear that they last a lot longer than the rest of the capacitors, but I only want to do this power supply once. So I've got those as well. Now we're going to get brutal. I've got this uh, vice grips, and we are going to reef these capacitors off the board. This is counter to everything I've ever been taught, but I saw a YouTube video by somebody I totally respect that says the best and nearly only way to get these capacitors off is to just twist them. So, we will try it on some of these capacitors, and if it doesn't go horribly wrong on the first try or two, We'll call it a success. So, I'm clamped on. I'm going to rotate. Oh, that sounded so bad. Hey, he was right. Did not hurt the traces at all. It tears the feet right off the capacitor. There you go. Nice. So, um, and if we, if we were to get really close to this board, let's see, C11. You can see that the feet are actually still on the board, so it didn't hurt the traces at all. And uh, <clears throat> we can take the soldering iron and some flux and get those feet off, and we'll have undamaged pads. 
boggles my mind that this works at all, but yeah, it just did. So that was C11. And I took good close up pictures so I can see, I can go back and view the polarity when I'm ready to put these back on. This one's gonna be hard to rotate um, because I've got the switch so close, but we'll give it a shot. Wow, that was ready to pop off already. Cool. Once I get all these off, I'm gonna clean the board. I may not have had that on camera when I did that, but yeah, we just did this capacitor by the power switch. This is probably just a bulk incoming power buffer. Probably not terribly important to operation. I see a lot of people saying to use vinegar to neutralize this board. I'm guessing that they're assuming that these are alkaline based um, electrolytes inside the capacitors. If it's an acid-based electrolyte, then adding an acid to it is not going to neutralize it. So I'm just going to go with a little soap and water and follow it up with some denatured alcohol, or yeah, some isopropyl. And then we're going to dry it really well. And I'm going to use good flux. And that should be all we need. I've seen a lot of people where these, uh, these chips here, the uh, 74 HC132 chips have gone bad. This is part of the power turn-on circuit here, and they certainly are co covered in the um, acid from the electrolytes or alkaline, whatever. So I am uh, not going to be surprised if they're bad and I have to go back through and remove them and order new ones. These are really cheap standard components. So let's do this one next. Am I still on the shot? Good, I am. So I'm gonna start as far over and we're gonna go this way. And there we went. Boy, that sounds brutal. But it works fine. Okay, there's another one. Luckily, all of the um, surface mount capacitors on this board are the same size except for these two little ones. And uh, won't be a problem determining which one goes where. There was some glue underneath these things from the factory and it's still on the board, but uh, after all these years it wasn't holding on very well because it generally lets go before I even clamp this thing down, I think. And we will rotate. There we go. These are coming off quite well, just as described. I cannot believe this actually works. I would have expected this to destroy the board. We're gonna go after this one now. Oops, sorry about bumping the camera there. There we go. Oh, there's a lot of corrosion under that one. I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning there. Okay, next up is... Uh, Trying to keep repositioning this so it stays in the shot. There's that one. These are for the sound. Yeah. These are always bad and people who try to run this board without replacing these find that they don't have any sound until they replace them. So they're not uh, function critical for the general computer itself, but they are very critical if you want to have sound. These are going to be hard to get to as well. Tight spaces down here. As you may have seen when I first got this computer out of the box, the uh, audio jack was completely covered with one of the metal shields. I don't know how long it had been like that, but it didn't look like this thing had been taken apart anytime recently. So most of this thing's life it probably had no sound. Simply user error. Uh, well, this one's really rotating. Oh, it's because I popped the top of it off and left the bottom behind. Now it's going to be a lot harder. Yep. The plastic just went ahead and shattered and left, left the feet behind. Oops. 
same as all the others really. You can see that this one was more corroded and uh, this is uh, winning the contest for worst so far. Looks like it's just a power buffer for the uh, expansion slot so it's probably not terribly critical but I do want to try and put a new one on there. I'm sure it'll be fine. And then the big capacitors, those are going to be easy. Just use a standard, you know, I don't even need to desolder it. I can just heat it up and pull the pin out, pull the leg out, and uh, just make sure I put the new ones in in the same polarity. That's easy peasy. We got positive back here, positive back here. Same on this one, it's got a nice positive. This board is really well labeled. All the silk screen, it's like they wanted you to service it. This was back before Apple got all proprietary and secretive. You don't even need a schematic for this thing practically. It's so well labeled. Anyways, we'll be back when I start soldering on this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get these off before I clean up the board. I put some flux on the back of the board right where they come through. So I've got my soldering iron. Let's have a look at that. Got my soldering iron, good old Radio Shack. Actually, I had to replace the uh, wand on it already once, but I love this thing because it's got a digital readout of what I set the voltage to. So, we'll come down here, right here, and we're going to try and flow some fresh solder in there first. So I've got flux around it already, so I shouldn't really need to do this, but I just want to, just to be safe. I've got the soldering iron set pretty high. You may have noticed the temperature on this thing is up pretty high because the uh, board's got enough of a ground plane and power plane in it that I don't want to uh, be fighting with a cold tip while I'm trying to desolder this stuff. This leg of it's kind of bent over. sound of my flux sizzling. Not feeling particularly inspired about this last leg back here. All right, so I've now flown, flowed some solder through there. Put a little flux on it. why not? Drop here, drop there, 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 and there. It's a tired old flux pen. <laughs> All right. Oh, you couldn't see any of that, could you? Oh well. So I put some flux on the top, and now what I'm gonna do is, I've got some better pliers that I probably should have used earlier. needle nose. So I'm going to try and heat this up and when I think it's ready I'm going to try and pull it out. Come on. Put some soldering up here. I'm really got some dwell time going on now. See if I can get this leg out of here. Certainly don't want to pull the trace out. There we go. That went nicely. I think the trick is to flow some solder in from both ends. Okay, I saw that one liquefy. It should be. No, well, maybe not. Come on. I think this is the one that might be bent over on the back. Yes, yes it was. Okay, so let's go down with it. All right. Let's see if we can straighten this leg out.
Oh, where are my flush cuts? That's what I need. I really need to find my flush cuts if I'm going to have any hope of doing this even slightly properly. Anyways, there we go. That should have got rid of the hooked leg. Now let's go and get this thing out once and for all. Good knot. There we go. Okay. Next leg. Let's put some flux on here. Some solder anyways. It's got flux on it. Uh, Oh, that came out so easy. Beautiful. There we go. That one was a little bit hooked, but not near as bad. Am I on camera? Not really. Okay, let's be on camera. That one came right out. Now yeah, for the other end. There we go. A little downward push and then a pull right up and it comes out. And finally, you. And I don't think I put any flux on this yet. doesn't want to budge. Let's try the other end. There we go. Got that one out. Hopefully we didn't damage the board. This one's just got a great big power plane all around it, so I think that's why we're having so much trouble fighting getting some heat into the board. Worst case, I can get my air gun out and put some heat into it that way. Yeah, boy, it's not taking any heat with all that. Oh yeah, this is a great big ground plane over here. We'll do this with some hot air. on the front side and I should see this solder start to liquefy when I've got it in the ballpark. Turn up this heat some more. Okay, I'm starting to see. Okay, yeah, we're getting there. Oh, almost there. Oh yeah. There we go. Came right out. Let's see if I can blow the solder out of there. Nope. Oh well. Good enough. Okay. While that thing's still hot, I'm going to flow some fresh solder into here. Oh man, this pad is all eaten up from the corrosion. Yep. Ah, uh, it's a pretty sight. Okay, we'll see how that cleans up. And I'm scrubbing the thing. Turn off my soldering iron. I'm waiting for my hot air to cool down. So that is all the capacitors off the board now. Alright, I got the circuit board in the sink. 
Got some dish soap. I'm going to use a toothbrush and a lot of water. After we get all that rinsed off, I've got some isopropyl alcohol and then I'm going to let it sit overnight to dry. So, we'll start in the first area. This right here. Let me move the camera some. There we go. I'm trying to be pretty gentle about this. Start with just plain water. Just give it a little, little scrub. Primarily these 74, 132 chips that uh, are all coated in airy acid, but there's also going to be some around here. I'm using fairly warm water, not hot, but not cold. These uh, 75, 175 chips look pretty corroded as well. And I believe um, they're related to the uh, cereal ports. And then we've got some mess here as well as uh, some leakage. And this is just water at this point. I'm really only concentrating on the areas where the capacitors were. I don't need to soak the whole board down for no reason. I'm not going after the RAM slots. There's no capacitors near the RAM, which is probably a really lucky thing. I hope you're able to see this. I'm, I've got to work in here, so I'm sure I'm blocking the camera some. You're just going to have to bear with me. Leave some angry comments if you don't like it. it. Seems to make everybody happy when they do that. Doesn't really solve the problem because I've already recorded the video. Okay, I'm going to say to add some soap now. Over here, a little bit over here. Maybe more than a little bit. I'm putting a lot on actually. Got plenty of water on there. So this shit suds up nice. And, oh yeah, see that? Oh yeah, brush your teeth. I think that a lot of the reason why these don't work after people get done is there's still acid underneath, which I'm sure is pretty conductive. Let's turn that off while I'm scrubbing. Okay. Now, were there any other capacitors that I'm missing? I don't think so. I think I've got... They're always in groups. Now, this chip was... Any chip that's near a capacitor, I'm probably going to want to scrub really well on all sides. This is what I'm using to get the, uh, the acid off the board. This is an, I mean, this is not going to be acidic. It's not going to be alkaline. The base, I guess, is the base is the uh, opposite of an acid. So it's not going to be base. It's not going to be acid. It should just clean things up real nicely. And I've got one more capacitor down here. Get some more soap on my toothbrush. It's a brand new toothbrush I got, so it's never had toothpaste on it. Went into the grocery store and picked the cheapest toothbrush they had. It's a Oral B. Cost me like two bucks. I'll probably be using it for years to come. I couldn't find my other toothbrush that I'd been using for cleaning things, but it was a leftover from the kids anyway, so it had a lot of miles on it before I even started. All right. Now it's time to start rinsing. And you might think, oh, water on a computer, oh, this is going to ruin the computer. But no, actually, water, water doesn't hurt circuit boards at all. In the factories, when they make circuit boards, they'll often use water to wash them. Uh, I'd love to have an ultrasonic cleaner to wash this thing. Oh, I forgot this capacitor down here. Well, there's plenty of soap in here. Let's Grab some soap from up here. I want to get this capacitor that was near the, the power switch. There we go. Okay. Doesn't hurt to wash multiple times. 
These chips still look pretty nasty, but I mean, it's corrosion. It's going to look nasty. I'm talking about these 132 chips. You can see their legs are kind of black still, but it is what it is. Should have been no acid back here because nothing's going to be uh, leaking on this side of the board, but uh, it's worth giving it a quick, quick wipe down. Isopropyl. I'm just gonna start over here. Yeah, you can see the spot. I'm gonna come over here. There we go. There's that. And then this area. I'm using copiously large amounts of this stuff because it's cheap and this is really what's going to do the majority of the cleaning at this point. Uh, one, of the, one of the legs on one of these orange components is really green. It's a shame. Hope I don't end up with like a bad modem port or something. Okay. So, that's all cleaned up. Let's do this set of capacitors. This is the, this, this one that I did first was the uh, audio chips and um, maybe a little bit of the serial ports. This is the power turn-on circuitry. These are the, uh, the chips that often seem to not survive the uh, acid life. My best to clean these up. Get this capacitor that was near the power switch. <coughs> Ooh, fumes from this uh, alcohol are pretty potent. All right, that's as good as I need it to be. Okay, put the lid back on my alcohol. I'm gonna take this out to the garage and use my air compressor to blow the bulk of the water off. And then I'll leave it to dry overnight before we uh, before we solder it back together. There we go. All right, we're back at it again. I will try my best to get the camera in sight and not block it, but I'm really just I'm going to try to do a good job of soldering as well. I've got a, a tube of uh, flux here. I bought this a while back expiration date so this expired you know four months ago I bought it somewhere between then and then so I've had it a while I don't think it's actually expired but I've used much older flux than this anyways this is the flux that Lewis Rossman uses um, I bought it from him from his online store so we're gonna start over here at C16 I've got the capacitors I need. This C16 is in this package, so I need to cut this one open. There we go. Now we're going to hand solder this stuff. I've got some nice tweezers to hold it still. First thing I want to do is put some flux on C16. Let's see when I zoom you in some. Um, 
2x, there we go. C16's right here. That'll do. There we go, a little bit of flux. Alright. Now, I'm going to take my soldering iron and some solder. I've got the tip a bit. And I've still got the little broken off pieces of the uh, original ones on there, so the original capacitors on there. So I'm just going to hopefully flow them right off there. I don't seem to be getting anything off, so must be fine. Now, I'll take one capacitor. I bought some extras just in case something goes wrong, like I misplace it. I have a plus on the uh, silk screen, and um, the silk screen's also got a shape, so yeah, it matches the capacitor. Black stripe is negative on electrolytics, and the it's got a shape here. Let's see if we can get that to focus. See the shape, and then if we see on the board, it's got that same shape. I could use my hot air to reflow these, but I don't want to put that much heat into these poor things. There we go. It is attached, soldered down, pretty well flat. I kind of pushed down on it while I was soldering it so that when the solder liquefies, it goes down into it. Now these were originally glued on, that's part of why the twisting method worked so well to remove them is because if I tried to just heat the solder, the glue would still hold it in place. So I might as well use a rather aggressive um, bit of force on it. Let's go up here to C2, 3, and 5. C2, 3, and 5 are 47 UF. So, C2, 3, and 5. Okay, so. These are also getting big ones. Most of these are the big ones. All right. I'm really gonna be bumping the camera a lot because it's really in my face now, but hey, I'll let you see me do these. A little bit of flux on here. Came with a little nice pointy tip, but I've misplaced that over the years. So, clean my tip. We're just going to put a little fresh solder on the tip, and then we're going to go in here. I don't have a smoke extractor, so I'm going to work around all the smoke I'm creating. Okay, that time I got a piece off. Not sure what, oh there it is, okay. Okay, I got the piece off on that one. Okay, let's use the tweezers to get those pieces out of there. There's one piece. Ugh, sticky flux. There's the other piece. Let's go back to this first one here. Okay, there's nothing in there. Nothing in that one either. Okay. This one feels like it's got a piece in it. Come on. Let's put some solder into that one. Okay. Doesn't want to come off. Fair enough. This one looks really bad.
Yeah, so C5 is going to be my most problematic, I think. Let's start there. Now I want to start at the back so I can work my way forward and not have things in the way. Yeah, look at that. I can see it on camera. I've got solder up here, but not where the pad's supposed to be. Hmm. That may be a problem. Anyways, I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm just going to... Reflow the easy ones. Okay, that one's good. C3 will be easy as well. Yep, yep. Just kind of give it a wiggle. It won't wiggle. It's not as squ square and straight as I'd like it to be, but it's making contact. Okay, now the problematic C5. That pad looks like it's just completely corroded off there. That's what Lewis Rossman does, he kind of scrapes the board gently with his soldering tip. That seems to work for him. Did I lose the tip? Or why did I lose the pad? Oh, that pad's moving around, isn't it? Hmm. So if I can't get any solder down on this pad, that may be a problem. It looked like I had a pad for a second there. Like that. There we go. I found it. Cool. It's a lot of corrosion on that pad is what's going on. A little fresh solder. And Get a, let's get a freaking capacitor on there before it goes bad again. Ay, ay, ay. Let's put a little flux on here because we don't have flux above what we're working on. There we go. goes everything. I'll solder on my tip and go to town. Yeah, it seems stuck. A bit more solder on this tip. Okay, and one more reflow. Beautiful. I'm happy with it. As happy as I can be with that really bad looking pad. But that was from all the corrosion that, or you know, the, the, 
the electrolyte that came out of that old capacitor had just eaten away at that. So hopefully we cleaned it up some. Let's move you up some right here. See the leftover electrolyte from one of my cleaning right there. So we are going to gently, gently scrape some of this away. We don't need this to stay on the board anymore. Oh, and then there was a capacitor that went from here to here. All right. I got a ball of solder right there. Why? There we go. Okay, so C9 is down. So I'm looking for C6, 10, and 13 now. Okay, I see C6. It's over by the power button. Right there. Um, and above that I've got 10, 13, 12, and 11, I believe, were the smaller capacitors. Yes, they were. So I will do those next. Let's get everybody in this area done. Let's clean up C6. Okay, now I can go for all the through hole ones. I have a desoldering iron, albeit in fairly poor condition, so I'm gonna try and use it to do these. I'm gonna be working on these capacitors, these uh, holes here. The tip on this thing is not in great shape, so. Nope. You know, I have a lot of luck if I use my hot air gun, in addition to my desoldering iron. The hot air gun can get some heat into the board. Okay, I'm gonna try these from the other side now. We got the pads cleaned up. Boy, howdy, was that difficult. You can see I kind of damaged one of the pads on 14, but it's okay still. 14, 15, and 18 are 470 UF. 14, 15, and 18 somewhere else on the board, so I'll go to that one next. Positive, positive. You got some arrows pointing towards negative. these leads just right. Okay, yeah, that goes through just fine. Yeah, these are 470 volt, 16. Okay, so I don't quite have it centered this, this time, so I'll bend it right about there. Out. I think I got it. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Okay, so I screwed it up a little bit. Bending leads is not my strong suit. That'll do. Let's see if I can do the other one more centered. gun has cooled down and shut itself off. That's better. Oh, I did a lot better job on this one. Let's pull this back out and see if I can fix it. All right. Let's try and get some some to flow into this. So I'm gonna put some uh, flux down.
Hmm. Check the back side to see if it flowed through. Yes, they all look fine. Legs filled it over because it was sitting on the desk, but it's fine. Okay, I'm going to put some heat into this one. It's not flowing. Leg isn't exactly straight on that one, but I don't care. Yeah, a little kink in the leg. Can't hardly see it. Won't really matter. But yeah, it flowed all the way through those, so we're good. Final capacitor is where? I'm gonna go right here. And I'm gonna need to desolder those too. This was the one that I had a heck of a time desoldering last time. Cause it really sucks the heat away back here. Yes, came right out, cool. Let's go ahead and do this one too. Got a little bit of it out. Let's flip it over and do the other side. All right, couldn't get all of this on camera because frankly, I just want to get it done. We're gonna need heat again to re-solder this, which is a real bummer. Now it's just a matter of scrub this up because like I got flux all over the place. Lots of thick, nasty flux. So I'll return to that same procedure I showed you before, but you don't get to watch this time. Soapy water and a toothbrush and then some alcohol to help it dry. And then I'm going to blow it with the air compressor to really dry it. And then it'll sit for a while before I actually uh, power it up. Probably, probably a day. Or at least a day. Probably a week. And that's that. This board has been recapped. Alright guys, I'm cutting it off here for the week. I apologize for this video being so long. I tried to cut it down as much as I could. You can see I fast forwarded through a couple of spots and maybe I was a bit redundant on showing you some things, but I just wanted you to follow along while I did it all. Anyways, we didn't even get to the power supply. Um, I wanted to put that in this week, but I guess it'll be part of next week's. I'll make that one a lot quicker because, uh, uh, spoiler alert, the power supply rebuild failed. So we'll just get through the recapping process on that really fast and jump into what I had to do to solve that problem. I'll see you next week. Check back every Monday for new episodes of this series.